to another edition of Big Guns where we look into the life and times of some of the biggest names in the real estate business. This week the company in focus is a brand that's over a century old. You will perhaps find a hint of this brand in every Indian household today. Trust, quality and solid customer recall. This brand is an institution in itself and when such a company gets into the business of building homes for every Indian their patronage over the market is hard to challenge. You're talking about Godrej Properties. Nikhil Sivdas chronicles the growth of the youngest company in the Godrej Group. The year was 1991. After decades of economic isolation, India finally opened up its economy and new opportunities arose in every sector. For the 100-year-old Godrej Group, one opportunity immediately came into mind. We've always had a large plot of land in Vikroli where our main factories have been for decades and when the economy started opening up in the 90s uh, we felt there would be a good opportunity as the economy opens up to develop our property in Vikroli. It all started with um, Godrej converting some of the godowns into office space which were leased out. What happened thereafter was that a lot of multinationals wanted to rent those offices which happened and therefore it attracted big names like even McKinsey's you know, to rent place from there. That was the starting point of the property business for Godrej as I understand it. That may have been the beginning of the journey for Godrej properties but it was not without its share of problems. The Godrej Group is Mumbai's biggest landowner holding nearly 3,500 acres of property in Vikroli. Most people would consider that to have been a gold mine that could have been utilized to transform Godrej into a realty powerhouse. However, restrictive government policies put an end to that ambition. Permissions for real estate development have, are being delayed, were being delayed. There was the Urban Land Sealing Act which prevented uh, property from being developed it gradually was removed in different states. Unfortunately, in the state of Maharashtra, it was removed only a few years ago. Most importantly, uh, we do not wish to interact a lot with the government. And unfortunately, in the real estate business, you need to interact with the government. Eventually, the restrictions started lifting and the company quickly grew to become a real estate player of repute. In 2010, Godrej Properties successfully went public, becoming one of the youngest real estate developers to go the IPO route. Today it has gained the reputation of being one of the fastest growing real estate developers in the country, growing at a compounded annual growth rate of 30 to 40 percent every year. That's not all. With nearly 89.7 million square feet of prime real estate under development across 12 cities, Godrej Properties has also successfully built up a pan-India presence covering both residential and commercial segments. In spite of being Mumbai's biggest landowner, Godrej Properties prefers to develop joint venture partnerships with landowners while outsourcing the construction work and raising finance from private equity investors. That's a tactic that allows them not to sink heavy investments into building land banks while enabling them to gauge the mood of the market. I think it's a smart path. So, and maybe some of the developments are close to their developments. Maybe it's a good opportunity for, the, for them to test the markets. Uh, you know, there's no harm going and doing a dipstick study in the same micro market uh, where you happen to own some land and therefore being able to launch your own project uh, which much, uh, you know, better understanding of the market conditions. Much of the credit for these tactics go to the management style of the group. Key to this has been the company's willingness to bring in professionals from sectors other than real estate. No easy task considering the skepticism with which the sector is considered. We are not restricting our entire hiring only to real estate today. And you know, it's again a delightful feeling when you are going across talking to people from other sectors who had apprehensions in the past. Today they are looking forward to joining real estate and largely driven by the kind of culture which we drive. The drive to bring in talent from different sectors has enabled Godrej Properties to introduce some game-changing concepts to the realty sector. 
Their marketing and sales division, for instance, is already cooking up several innovative techniques targeted specifically at the NRI segment, which forms nearly 20% of Godrej Properties' volumes. To be able to provide a seamless customer experience to them, we have what we call IP calling, which is a free call which an NRI can expect from us after he logs in and shares his mobile telephone number. If you want to shoot at a height of 60 stories, you know, the only option today is, 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 is very basic technology available. Now we are evaluating something which is largely from the military to be able to allow us to get this kind of height uh, uh, photo shoots. So there's a lot of exciting uh, uh, programs that we at Godrej Properties are looking at. This out-of-the-box approach is also reflected in the company's design philosophy. Talent from across the globe has been brought on board to develop innovative in-house design concepts under the GPL Design Studio tag. About 12 months ago, uh, we re-looked re at design as a, a unique value proposition to our process, product, people. Uh, we decided to make GPL a design-led, design-focused company. Uh, what that means is use design to uh, distinguish ourselves from our peers in the market. Um, and, and in order to bring the sort of operations piece together with the um, value proposition, uh, we restructured ourselves as the GPL Design Studio. These unconventional strategies are what sets Godrej Properties apart from the rest of the pack. However, the trump card for the company still remains its brand name. In a sector that's normally associated with scams and black money, customers consider the Godrej brand as a clean and dependable group and flock to it in droves. The expectations from Godrej Properties are running high and nowhere as much as from the chairman of the company who has set the bar high indeed. Overall group growth uh, target is what we call 10 by 10, to be 10 times in 10 years, which is a compounded annual growth rate including acquisitions of 26%. In Godrej properties, we expect to grow fast. The only limitations are financial and our ability to execute. So I feel we will grow much faster in the real estate business than in our other business. Let's meet the young dynamic business leader who has the tall task of surpassing his legacy. Pirocha Godrich, thank you very much for speaking to us. The first question I think I'm going to go back a little bit in time and go back to your academic background. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Masters in international relations and you also worked as a private secretary in Minister, Ministry of External Affairs, went on to work in, with Hillary Clinton as well. So, a lot of interest in politics, still retain it? Well, first of all, great to be with you, Manisha. Um, I, I think that's quite funny, it was a long time since I've <laughs> been asked about those. To be perfectly honest, those were things I was doing, um, you know, when I was getting my undergraduate and master's degrees um, as internships during the summer. I did ha have a, a, a sort of interest in international affairs and politics, which continues. Uh, but I must say, no, no active interest certainly in, in, in getting my own hands dirty in, okay, in, no in either interest, politics. But right now, uh, Indian uh, politics is at a very interesting juncture, isn't uh, it? And there's some bit of trepidation amongst businessmen in terms of what the election will uh, throw up. What's your own prognosis? You think that the industry is waiting for a sentiment turnaround? Well, I think certainly, you know, the, the level of politics and I think the level of governance in India is something that, that people are concerned about. I think the, the amount of decision making or the amount of time for decision making, particularly in a sector like real estate, has been quite disappointing. And I think people are looking at the elections as a, as a moment of change. Mm -hmm. And I don't think change necessarily means just, you know, one party or the other. But a new party with a fresh set of ideas, with a new mandate from the people, I think is what's needed. And I do expect that to come about. I, I'm quite optimistic that we're not worried about a hung parliament. Um, I, well, of course, you have to be worried about that, and I think you, you know I, I am a little bit concerned about that. But I, I don't think that is the most likely outcome um, currently. I think there is a sense that people do want to change. There's a sense that I think will result in a, in a government getting a, a reasonably strong mandate. All right. So now back to business. When you joined uh, the real estate business, and since becoming the CEO to now. What has been the high point? I mean, 
the most exciting part of this business? Well, I think the, the, the good part about the real estate business is there's, there's no shortage of excitement and you know, no, no, no shortage of, of high points. Unfortunately, there's also no shortage of you know, headaches and, and low points. But um, no, I think you know, we're, we're very happy with the way the business has grown over the last few years. Um, we've gone from you know, five or six years ago uh, being nowhere near one of the largest developers in the country to now having a presence in every major real estate market in, in 12 cities across the country. Um, we've done that, I think, through scaling our business in a very capital uh, light manner by entering uh, into joint ventures across the country. So I think one of the things we're most happy with now is that we've established ourselves as a player that does have a presence in various parts of the country and has a successful rec track record now in most of these regions. So I think that's been a, uh, perhaps the thing I'm, I'm proudest of over the last few years. So, a lot of large developers in fact have gone back to believing that uh, real estate is more of a local business and you actually have the family owns a huge amount of land parcels within Mumbai suburbs. You still thought it was a better strategy to spread out across the country? We, we did and we, we continue to feel that way and again I think it's one of these questions that there's pro probably no one-size-fits-all correct answer. You know I think it might be perfectly reasonable uh, for some developer to choose to play uh, more strongly in one region, perhaps they have a very strong brand in that particular region that's not as easily extendable, perhaps they have very good relationships, etc. in that location that again cannot as easily be extended. As we looked, however, at our own business, we felt the biggest advantage we had was a brand that is known across the country, right? Um, which allows us to more easily, we believe, attract partners on the, on the land ownership side as well as end customers in new markets. And I think we've now demonstrated through you know, very successful project launches in, in cities in all parts of the country that that, that uh, is possible uh, with, with, a, with a good brand name like ours. Have there not been big challenges in following the asset uh, light model? JVs in real estate sometimes are tricky businesses, in, aren't they? They, they, they can be, but um, you know, I think we're certainly overall uh, very, very happy with the way our, our joint venture strategy has, has played out over the last few years. So what has worked? Um, I think what's, what's worked again is making sure that we're selecting the right partners, mm -hmm. that we're you know, not overextending ourselves just in one geography, but really looking at creating that national footprint and thereby uh, de-risking ourselves from any one micro market. Um, and ultimately making sure that the project by project makes sense, because I think the aggregate you know, often is uh, uh, some of the parts. So I think we've, we've, we think we're very happy with the types of projects we've added. And it's not to say, of course, that we haven't made mistakes, that we, we haven't had projects that have not been uh, or have not lived up to expectations. But I think what really counts for us and what will enable us to you know, ensure we can grow well in the future is making sure we're learning the appropriate uh, lessons from those mistakes and, and, and implementing them on, on our new projects. All right. So the name itself, like you say, it inspires instant trust and you didn't have to worry about taking the brand across the country, but that brand also brings with it great amount of responsibility. What happens when a project gets delayed? How do you deal with the customer?